Hello and welcome to my first ever Formula One video blog which I've cleverly entitled Formula One on One. In my former life as the BBC's Formula One presenter, about now I would have uh, landed in Australia to gear up for the first Grand Prix, but in my new life as full-time dad and BT Sport presenter doing all their Premier League football, um, I'm here in my study three days before the start of the new Formula One season, but it got me thinking, why don't I do what I would have done at a race weekend and share my thoughts about Formula One with you, um, just by calling someone from the sport really and having a bit of a chat with them. So I've got my mobile phone right here and I'm going to just scroll through and see where uh, my phone book takes me to. So let's go to my phone book and just get scrolling and see where it stops. Okay, it stopped on M. So there you go. Uh, there's a few people we could ring there. Uh, Huey Morgan probably quite likes his cars. Max Mosley, former president of the FIA, definitely likes his cars. Chris Moyles, we know he's very much into his cars. Uh, John Motson's there. Um, but how about Sterling Moss? I think Sterling is the person to, uh, to ring. So I'm going to do this before every Grand Prix. Just give someone who is a famous Formula One name a ring and just basically chat about the sport with them. So hopefully this should ring. It's ringing now. Hello, Sterling. Yeah. Hi, Sterling. It's Jake here. Yeah. Hi. Humphrey. Yeah, yeah. Jake Humphrey. How's things? Oh, very good. Thank Look, you. I won't disturb you for long, Sterling. I just wanted to have a a quick chat ahead of the new Formula One season. How how do you kind of feel two or three days before the season starts? Does it remind you of the buzz that you used to get before the start of the season? Yeah, but, yeah, but they're so far away now, you know. Yeah. You know, we have to wait till, till hopefully they'll be televising everything. Do you still enjoy it though? Oh yeah, very much. I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, we keep hearing things about something wrong with Mercedes, then they hear they're really very good, then you know, the, you know, the uh, other ones. Red Bull, yeah, I mean Red Bull have really, Red Bull have really struggled, haven't they, in, um, in pre-season yeah, testing? Yeah, they are. But then you never know how much of that, you know, isn't, isn't playing. Yeah, I know, a bit of sandbagging and lulling people into a false sense of security. Yeah, and you're uh, you're you're good mates with Seb, aren't you? He's, I'm not sure who uh, who is the bigger fan of the other one, whether Sebastian is your biggest fan or whether you're his. I don't know, but he's certainly mine. Yeah, you I mean, like him. Uh, well, yeah, well, I think he's a, I think he's a really good world champion. I mean, he's got mm. personality, he smiles, he's young, and you know, he's, he's amusing. I, I think he, I think he's really I think there are not many others that would be as good as him actually. Carrying the title. So, what are you expecting from the the British drivers this season, Lewis and Jensen? I well, I reckon that uh, I think Lewis is faster than Jensen. I think Jensen's a more thinking driver. Mm. I think you know, if you, I think Jensen will make make the decision as early as you can to get onto wits if it starts to rain or anything like that. But, uh, but I, I think Lewis has probably got the speed. Yeah, and it looks like he's got the engine as well with the Mercedes this season, doesn't exactly. it? Yeah, so basically the situation is that I think at the moment all the cars running the Mercedes engines are probably quicker than the Renault engine and maybe even the Ferrari engine as well. So I think you know the aim of the game at the moment is to try and catch Mercedes, but that's what happens when you have these big regulation changes, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean why they had to bug it about everything was really good. Yeah. You know, we saw exciting racing, lots of passing, every damn thing a race needs. So they say, oh, it's going too well, it's screwed up. And how's, uh, how's your lovely wife Susie? And what's, uh, what's Susie cooking you for dinner tonight? I think lamb. Lovely. The, I think so. the dinner of champions, Sterling, the dinner of champions. Um, <laughs> right now then, everyone that I chat to throughout the season on this, um, I'm going to ask them to make their predictions for who's going to finish first, second and third in the championship and also uh, who's going to be the constructors' champion. So do you want to give it a bash, first of all? Yes. Right, so first, number one, your champion this year. Vettel, you're going for Vettel to win it again. So that means Red Red Bull are going to recover. I think the whole the whole setup is, is so so well run and you know so good. I really do. I mean, if he doesn't win it, he will deserve to. That's what I mean. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Second in the championship. I think I think Lewis will do it. Lewis second and third. Probably, uh, probably Rosberg. Yeah, I think the Mercedes. We don't know yet until we see the Ferraris come out and have a real go. 
I mean, they've got the drivers now. Yeah, they have. Do you reckon Fernando and Kimi will get on well together? That's a good point. <laughs> I, d I don't know. I, d I've met, you know, I know each of them to say hello to, but I don't know either of them, but I, but I do know what their reputations are and so on. It'd be... Uh, uh, Fiery. I should think... Uh, yeah, I should think... Be, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, that's what Ferrari always used to do, you know. He could get uh, three drivers and, uh, and just try and get them to fight each other. So true, so true. So who's going to win the constructors' battle? I guess you're going to say Mercedes if they're second and third in the in the drivers' championship. Yeah, I, I reckon Mercedes. I should think. Okay, it would be well, love no, to I see Ferrari. Actually, no, no, I don't think they. Were, no, I think I think I think actually Vettel could get it. I mean, what, Red Bull. Red Bull. Vettel, yeah. Okay, so are you saying Red Bull over Mercedes? Yes. Sterling, thank you very much. It's been lovely to chat to you. Enjoy your lamb for dinner. Um, and hope to see one of them. Well, you'll, you'll be coming to the races sometimes, will you? Yeah, I'll pop down to Silverstone or something like that. Um, so I'll, I'll probably see you there, will I? Great, I hope so. Bye now. What a legend. The best driver to never win a Formula 1 World Championship. And an all-round lovely guy, as you've just heard. So, there you go. That is my first Formula 1-on-1. -on -one. Um, and Sterling Moss was the man who got the lucky phone call. Uh, and wasn't he in a good mood as well? And he thinks Sebastian Vettel will be crowned the world champion this year, which would require a big turnaround from Red Bull um, after this first race. My personal opinion, going into the first race, I think Mercedes have pretty much got it sewn up. Um, but watch out for Williams. I'm a huge fan of the Williams team. Felipe Massa is without doubt one of the nicest guys in the Formula 1 paddock. I think of all my time in F1, JB, Mark Webber, Sebastian Vettel and um, Felipe Massa the four nicest guys in the paddock and you can throw Daniel Ricciardo into the mix there as well. A properly nice setup of drivers um, and I'm really keen for Felipe to do well at Williams and I hope Williams Martini Racing uh, win the first race in Australia. Um, I think that would be great for them and if not them then you know obviously Jensen who sadly lost his father over the winter. I think there would be a tear or two shed on the podium if Jensen can do the business in Oz um, and I will be at Silverstone with my pink shirt on in honour of John Button. Anyway. Thank you very much for watching the first Formula 1-on-1. -on -one. I'll get back to my cup of CBBC coffee. Um, and I'll see you for another one before race two of the F1 season. Enjoy the Australian Grand Prix.